Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 101 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. How cool is that? 101 episodes. Uh, fucking, dude, that shit's on 101 Dalmatians. I tell you what, you couldn't make a coat out of a, a podcast. Why did I even go into that? That's not funny. <laughs> oh, we've done 101 episodes and I still don't know how to fucking start the thing. Oh, I'll just start talking about 101 Dalmatians, that fucking Disney classic from 1940 or whenever it was. I don't even know. I bet that's wrong too. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. If you're, if you're a new listener, this is the podcast where I sit down alone in my bedroom and uh, talk to myself like some kind of schizophrenic. Generally about shit that I notice and can't stop thinking about, which, man, I have had, I don't know, I've had the weirdest week, well, the weirdest past few days, because I can't stop thinking about this one woman that I saw in public. I don't know what you're thinking. Oh, were you checking out girls again? No. Okay, I can't stop thinking about this bitch. I was walking through, like, just down a, a, a shopping strip, you know, like outside, whole bunch of shops. And behind me, I've been, dude, I've been thinking about this all day for the past four days, man. I was walking down the street and then behind me, there was like this 30-year-old woman walking behind me and she was just going, do 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 <laughs> she was fucking, she was singing Eye of the Tiger to herself, just going down the street, and I just hear this shit behind me, I'm like, what the fuck, what's that? First I'm like, oh, is this chick humming a song, that's kind of strange, and then I was like, oh, I know that song, where's that song from? I'm just walking down the street, this is what we're going, for fucking ages, she followed me. She wasn't following me, but we were going in the same direction. And she was doing... She did the whole song. She did the whole song, dude. It's the... The whole fucking song. The entire time she was walking, she was doing... Humming to herself the theme song of Eye of the Tiger. And I can't stop thinking about it. Where was she going? What was she doing that was so inspirational and manly that she needed Eye of the Tiger to be playing to motivate her to complete that task. I'll be honest, guys. I meant to go into a shop, but instead, I just kept going so I could see how long this chick was would hum Eye of the Tiger to herself, and she did the whole song. Actually, no, is that the... Actually, that's the final countdown. <laughs> that's the final countdown, is it? Or is that Eye of the Tiger? It's the final countdown. Oh, well, that's even weirder. Who the fuck hums the final countdown to each other? Oh, now I'm now I gotta go, now I gotta look it up. Is it the final countdown? Or is it Eye of the Tiger? Huh? It's the eye of the tiger. It's the final count. Dude, this eye of the tiger. I don't. I don't think it's eye of the tiger anymore. Ah, oh, fucking YouTube ads. I won't get ad blocked though, cause that's how I get paid. Not that I do. Oh no, no, no. It's not eye of the tiger. Eye of the tiger. See, if she was walking down the street going, ne, 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 ne. I'd be like, wow, this chick, everyone, get out of the way. I would be walking in front of her being like, get out of the way. Like, dude, look at the film clip to Eye of the Tiger. The guy's walking down the street, like on a fucking mission. That's that's not what the chick was like. She wasn't walking that fast. Everyone's staring at this person. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't it. So it must be Final Countdown, which which is really even weirder. I need to just confirm before everyone, I get roasted in the comments. Final countdown. Final count. Down. Where are we? 
All right. Oh, this is it. Dude, imagine this. She's walking down the street going... She did the whole song. She even did the bit where it goes up. Wait, is it here? I think it's coming. Like the build-up bit she did to herself. She did that whole fucking thing just to herself in a, in a shopping strip. Where was she going that was so important that she needed the final countdown playing in her head? Who the fuck listens to the final countdown anyway? Like, is that a song that you ever just whack on? And you're like, oh, you know, it'd be good now, the final countdown. No, you don't do that. Or, the, or Eye of the Tiger. Those are two songs that you never listen to because you know you don't deserve it. <laughs> Because you know that nothing that you were doing that day justifies the use of the final countdown. You don't need that much motivation. Okay? What, what do I do when I'm normally listening to music? I'm usually walking to, to work to go to the radio station. I don't need Eye of the Tiger. I'm not doing anything inspirational or difficult. I'm going to work. I live in a first world country. Dude, if you live in the first world, you're not allowed to listen to Eye of the Tiger. You can't listen. You can't chuck on the final countdown. You are only allowed to listen to the final countdown if you live in the second world. Because if, if you live in the third world, you probably don't have an iPod. <laughs> or you might have a Zune. <laughs> a fucking Zune. Oh, man. No, you're, not, you're just not allowed to listen to that song, man, if you're in the first world. Unless. I don't know. There is no unless. You're not allowed to listen to it. It's illegal. So that's probably why the woman was humming it to herself. Because she's like, look, I know what I'm doing. Doesn't justify me listening to Final Countdown. But I will hum it to myself. I'll give myself that. I reckon that's what she was going for. But yeah, I, I haven't, dude, I haven't stopped thinking about this bitch all week. And now I've spent eight minutes fucking talking about it. And now that I know that it was the final countdown and not Eye of the Tiger, I'm even more confused. That doesn't help me at all. Because the final countdown is even more like, Eye of the Tiger is like, you could, it's like, hey, I go to the gym. I go to the gym and I am a boxer. But the final countdown, dude, the final countdown, that's some end of the world shit. That's some, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, it's the fucking nuclear holocaust. I need a slay. I have the tiger is like, I need to beat a Russian dude in a boxing match. Final countdown is I need to fly up into space and defeat an alien. It's some apocalyptic shit, and you're not allowed to listen to it unless you live in the third world and you have a Zoom. <laughs> but this is why I couldn't stop thinking about it, right? So this bitch is behind me. She's going... <laughs> and I'm listening to this shit and I just kept walking to see where she was going. I was like, fuck it, I don't have anything, I don't have anything on to do. I might as well reverse follow a girl. Because you can't follow a chick, right? But if, if they're behind you and they're humming the final countdown, you can stay ahead of them to see how long they hum the song and they hum the whole song. So really, she followed me humming the final countdown. That's a bit scary. Do, 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 do. I'm going to kill this cunt. <laughs> but this is what got me, right? This is why I've been thinking about it all week. 
Because she was humming the final countdown. And then, while she was humming the song, she turned into a liquor store. She was like, do 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 did, oh, Dan Murphy's. And then she, <laughs> she went into the fucking store. Why? Okay, why does she need the final countdown to go and buy some fucking alcohol? Did it do do did it did Jim Beam? <laughs> did it do do I'm gonna smash a VV. No! I can't get over it. What was she doing? I don't know, man. That's what I've been doing all week. That's the only thing I've done this week, man. Is just think about that chick singing the final countdown to herself. Uh, you know what? Actually, I do know the difference between final countdown and Eye of the Tiger. Because I remember one time, I was in an... This happened ages ago. I was in like an IGA. And uh, it's just an independent supermarket. Which is a fancy way of saying a fucking shit supermarket that costs too much money. IGA, Independent Grocers Australia. Shut up. Alright? I don't want to pay fucking $5 for wheat picks, you dogs. I don't care how independent you are. I'm independent. I'm still making my comedy special five bucks. That's cheap as fuck. So don't come over here and charge me $7 for fucking wheat picks and then tell me, oh, you're supporting an independent thing. Really? How many IGAs are there? Because it seems to me that everywhere I go now, there's a fucking IGA. IGA sold out, man. IGA used to be... Used to be cool, bro. I used to walk into an IGA and you'd be greeted with friendly service. That's a lie. IGA was always fucking shit. They were just pretending. Why am I talking about IGA? Oh, yeah. I was in an IGA... And they were playing the radio. I think they were playing Triple M for some reason, which is a strange choice for a supermarket. Like, let's play the station that is directed at like 35 to 50 year old men in a place where only, you know, 40 year old women really shop at. <coughs> so I'm at IGA and the radio station is playing and then the final count no not the final I have the tiger starts playing and it's like and then everyone in the store just starts going like they start getting real pumped up to do the fucking shopping and it was an inappropriate use of the eye of the tiger because that's a motivational song that's going to make you do some cool shit but if that comes on in the wrong place and people start getting really pumped up, I mean, it can completely ruin the dynamic of whatever situation you're in. I of the Tiger started playing in a supermarket. Everyone went from, ah, where's my fucking beans, to, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the shopping and then I'm going to dominate the world because I'm the fucking best. But they're, they're in a supermarket. It didn't fit. Like, if you've played... I have the tiger during a funeral, I'd start I'd start like really nodding my head. Like inappropriately nodding, like, yeah. Like not not agreeing with what the priest is saying, being like, oh, they're such they were such a lovely person. I do miss them. I'd be nodding my head like, fuck yeah. This is sick. <laughs> if you started playing I have the tiger while you were having sex with a girl, she would die. She'd be dead. You would you would conquer that pussy to the point of no return. You would fucking murder her with your dick, and then you would then you would like use her corpse as stairs, put on a sweatsuit, and then run up them like Rocky, and then be like, I did it! Yeah, I ran up some stairs. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, you just can't play Eye of the Tiger, man. It's a fucking weapon. Um, <clears throat> hey, I wanted to uh, thank uh, everybody who came out to episode 100 and to everyone who's been supporting the podcast for 100 episodes. I didn't really do it properly, I think, in last episode, just because it was a live show. 
So I want to give a big thank you to Josh Wade for coming out on such short notice to do the, to do the live podcast and being funny. Brisbane is such a... Brisbane is so difficult for me in terms of... I don't know anyone in Brisbane. Uh, Josh Wade came down from the Gold Coast to Brisbane to, to do the show. And it was on really short notice and I really appreciate that. So... Definitely check out Josh's podcast and uh, send him some kind words if you enjoyed his time on the podcast because uh, I, I, re- I really thought it was fun and he made it so much better than it would have been. It would have been just me fucking yelling uh, at the hundred people that were there. And to all the people that were there and to the people who've been listening to this thing for a for hundred episodes, it means the world. Uh, it's really, really cool and um, I can't wait for a hundred more. So uh, what, el- what else has been going on this week? Um, dude, I've been, I've been doing stand-up again. I've been... Um, starting work on the next hour so i've done three hours so far plus the comedy special and the comedy special is done well the, sh- the show the live performance part of it is i need to fucking edit it still uh that we're in the editing process i'm going to talk about that a little bit later but um <coughs> i'm uh <coughs> sorry about this i've i think i might be i don't know i've been, I've been yelling about this chick listening to the fucking final countdown too much all week um losing my voice uh but yeah so I mean, I've been working on new material. I'm trying to write the next hour because I'm probably going to tour in September this year instead of April. I don't know. I'm going to try and not do any of the comedy festivals because I feel like the benefit isn't there and I don't really need them. I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm just going to give it a go. No comedian does this. Uh, and when you do the festivals, you're very controlled over where you perform, how long you perform, and how much you charge and how much you make. So I just figured I'd go out on a limb, try something very risky and do a tour outside of all comedy comedy festivals and, I don't know, see what happens. I think you guys have got my back. Uh, I, I don't think you guys particularly go, oh, this festival is on, so I'll go and see Lewis. I think you guys are just like, oh, I'll go and see the that kind because I, I like him. I don't really care about a festival. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I've been starting starting work on the next hour, which means I've been gigging a lot, and, uh, oh, I d- I've been doing some hell gigs, some couple of hell rooms, because when you're, when you're working on new stuff, you can't really do it at the good places, do you know what I mean? Like, if, like, at the Comics Lounge, perfect example, I save my good stuff for the Comics Lounge, because everyone there is a paying customer, and you're surrounded by professional comedians who are doing their best stuff, so you need to live up to that. But, so I don't want to try new shit there. However, I will go up in front of 30 people who haven't paid any money and who don't know comedy's on, and I will deliver them the shittest set of all time. <laughs> um, so I've been doing, I've been new, doing uh, new material in a whole bunch of hell rooms, and <clears throat> fuck, I did, I did a gig that was, that was a, that was a battle. I performed in Ringwood, which is, uh, I don't know if you're not from Melbourne. It's like it's like kind of regional, very bogan area, and I and I did it in a pub, an RSL. So it was like it was like concentrated bogans, and <clears throat> I love that crowd because I can do filthy stuff, and and they're animals, and they like it. Um, <coughs> the problem with this gig was the the fucking microphone was not working. And there is nothing you can do when the microphone doesn't work. It doesn't matter how good you are. And I was on like later in the night because I think I was the feature act. I was on later in the night and I was just watching comedians go up and they would crush it and then the microphone would fuck up and they would tank and it is just not their fault. Like, dude, I went up there and I watched a comedian do one of his best jokes, but the but the microphone cut out at like the most important part of the joke, the information part of it. So he was like, oh, set up, set up. And then there was silence. And then he did the punchline and no one got it because they didn't hear the important detail because the mic cut out and he didn't realize. And I was like, fuck. There's just nothing you can do to battle that. So I went up there and I, I did some new shit. Uh, I ended up going all right because I think it took... Because it was a wireless microphone and if you held it near the bottom, which is where the where the transmitter was... It kept cutting out, so you had to hold it up near the top, and then you also had to stand in a specific part of the stage. And we figured this out through like just—it was like 
World War One trench warfare where we would just send up one person with a different technique to fucking die and try it, and then they'd come back and they'd be go, yeah, that wasn't it. So we sent one person up and they held the microphone down the bottom, and then that made it worse, and then they came off and they were like, yeah, I just fucking died, that wasn't it. Then one person went up and they held it at the top, and that made it a little bit better, but then they still died because... The, they were standing in the wrong place. You were like, fuck. And then an- another person went up and they were, they were holding it at the top and they stood in the right place. And then, and then it was my turn and I had everything that I needed and it still cut in and out. So, I mean, I, I, did, I did quite well because it wasn't as bad as the other ones, but fuck, man, it was a bit of a hell gig. But <clears throat> that's what stand-up is. Especially when you're doing new shit. So uh, if you came out to Ringwood to see me because I think a few people came to see me I apologize wasn't my fault um if you if I don't know I, I, I that's that's all I can say sorry wasn't my fault but uh I I had a lot of fun and uh <laughs> yeah, I don't know it was fun <clears throat> man I think I'm gonna quit radio <laughs> if you haven't been listening to Luke and Lewis show uh one of the one of the latest long form ideas we've had is I'll just cut to the chase. <clears throat> we attempted in a day to eat forty boxes of Savoy's between me and Luke. And if you don't know what Savoy is, it's an incredibly it's like a savory biscuit that's really salty, and you're supposed to eat it with dip. It's not it's not food. It's a fucking biggie. I mean, it's a good biscuit, but you don't want to eat a box. And you certainly don't want to eat more than one box. And you don't want to try and eat fucking 40. So, <clears throat> Luke and I made a big claim that we could eat 40 boxes of Savoy split between us in 24 hours if we had a professional eater for one hour. And we spoke to the professional eater, uh, Hulk Smash Food, who was a great guy. He's the number one professional eater in the country. And uh, he was like, oh yeah, I can smash 15 boxes in an hour. So we were like, sweet, this is totally doable. Luke and I will eat 10 boxes each. This guy, Hulk Smash Food, will do 15. And then that's like, I don't know, almost 40. We should be able to smash 40. <clears throat> we ended up making it through three and a half each. And the professional eater only did six. It was the hardest shit. Your body doesn't want to eat it. Your body does not want to eat more than like five Savoy biscuits and I ate three and a half boxes which is like over a hundred of them it's like 150 fucking Savoys you don't want to eat that shit it was it was dude I generally know what I'm doing in life and I know the direction I'm headed in and I'm super satisfied with it but I'll tell you something when I woke up at midnight So I could eat a box of savory biscuits when I really needed to get to sleep because I didn't sleep properly the the, the previous day. I thought about quitting radio. I thought about quitting comedy. I was like, what am I doing with my fucking life sitting up at 1230 in the morning eating fucking Savoy's? What am I doing? I had this real re-evaluation of my life where I was like, dude, I'm getting paid minimum wage at the rate 25 bucks an hour for four hours every day to do the show. And here I am waking myself up at midnight so I'm not even getting paid minimum wage eating fucking Savoy's for a shit meme. And then I woke up at seven in the morning, had no breakfast, opened up a box of fucking Savoy's and started eating them. Do you know how confused my body was, man? The weirdest thing about that was I woke up and I smashed a full box of Savoy's. So I had two by by like 12 p.m. And... I was, so I had heaps of food, right? It's a lot, like a box, it's a lot of food. But I was so hungry, even though I was full, because my body was like, dude, 
I you you've been putting something in your mouth, but it's not nutrition. <coughs> I rocked up to my cafe like a rude cunt. All these people are like Some people think that we fake this stuff for the radio. Like, I had a lot of people ask, asking me if Luke actually walked to work six hours. Was another joke we did. He walked six hours to work one day to prove that he lived around the corner instead of in the country. Because he lives in, like, some fuck-off suburb. And people are like, oh, did you actually do that? It's like, yes! Of course we actually do everything. I don't want to make a fake radio show, but... down and then I was like no thank you and I pulled out a box of fucking Savoy's and they looked at me like the rudest cunt on planet earth because I was like I I was like yeah we should fake everything because this sucks (laughs) they were like dude you're taking up a I don't know I just saw it in their face like you're taking up a table for an hour and you're not buying our food you're gonna eat Savoy's <laughs> it's so fucking rude <coughs> oh I got a bit of a cough I think I might have to end this I'm really struggling struggling to talk guys I might have to end this um that's why the that's why the podcast is com- coming out on Monday um I just I just didn't have the voice to do it yesterday <coughs> I think I'm kind of losing my voice. I'm going to do a short one so that I don't... Because I got I got radio all week and I got a whole bunch of stand-up gigs that I need to do. I can't lose my fucking voice and I got to do a little review as well. So, sorry, this will be a short one, but it's to preserve my fucking voice. Um, all right, I'm going to do... What else do I got to talk about? I've got about... Uh, I've got 10 minutes left. I'm... All right, I'll do miscellaneous bit at the end, okay? Sorry, it's a short one, but, you know, I, I'd rather do a short one than fucking lose my voice and then the next one be shit house too. <coughs> Sorry. Um. All right. So, Miss Lane's been the end. It's. <coughs> Give me a second. I'm gonna pause this shit. All right. I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on with my voice. Um. Further reason why I should end this shit. All right. So, Miss Lane's been at the end is the part of the podcast where I answer life advice questions, or you guys tell me cool stories, or if you want my thoughts on a thing that happened, or a product, or whatever the fuck. Uh, send me an email at podcast at lewspears.com. I'm running a little bit low on questions and stories and all that shit. So, uh, yeah, if you need some life advice, if you have a cool story, or if you want to get my opinion on something you think that I would hate or love, uh, send an email to podcast at lewspears.com, and uh, I'll answer it on the potty. <clears throat> all right, so this uh, this email, I need life advice on being fit and making friends. So, typical Lewis Spears fan. Uh Hey, Lewis. I'm a big fan of your stuff. I can't wait for the special to come out. Call me Samantha. Uh, anyway, I got two questions for you. First one is, how do you how do you get slash stay motivated with working out? I'm really trying to get fit, but I find it so hard to keep on track. I also struggle with maintaining a healthy diet due to my love for everything sweet, which is a struggle. Um, <clears throat> yeah, with, uh, with, with fitness shit, uh, you can't, you can't rely on motivation, man. Motivation is like the most fickle thing ever. Motivation is not how you sustain something, I think. Like, motivation, I think is, is like a, it's like an overused thing in the sense that it's like, you know what it is? To me, it's kind of like adrenaline. Like, you don't want to need adrenaline to, to do something like adrenaline is if you're in a fight or if you need to run away from something or if you get hurt adrenaline is to like get you through that fucking moment and then it's gone and you wouldn't even know that it's there <clears throat> whereas I think motivation is like a it's like a less extreme version of that you know like you'll watch something really motivating on Facebook or whatever of some guy go get to the gym and you'll be like yeah and you'll feel really good and that will motivate you for like an hour and then it's gone like you can't rely on that shit you're never going to have that feeling all the time um what really helps me 
Mot- look, motivation helps you start. It doesn't help you continue doing something that you're already doing. Like, you don't get motivated to to read a book that you're halfway through. You just do it because you've been doing it all week or whatever. Or whatever. <clears throat> um, I think that motivation helps you start, but a habit is what keeps you consistent. So what's really worked for me is... I've recently gotten back into my pattern of waking up at 6.30 in the morning and then I eat food and then I go to the gym. And I do that every weekday, Monday to Friday. I have my own workout plan. It's probably a bit extreme for a beginner, but um, I just do that shit every single day and there's no excuse. Like, that's why I wake up at 6.30 in the morning. I put myself in a position where I have, like, five hours of nothing. So I'm either going to be sitting at home like a piece of shit, feeling like a piece of shit, or I'm like, oh, I have plenty of time to go to gym. I'll go. And I I realized as well recently that I don't particularly like the gym. And I think it's coming to terms with that. That makes me go, oh, yeah, because I used to really love the gym when I was younger and, and when I used to be full on into gym, but then I found comedy and I love that more. So now I don't have a passion for gym like I used to. So instead of trying to like manufacture a passion for something, I realized, oh, I don't really like it that much, but it's a thing that I really want to do and it makes me feel awesome after I'm done and it makes me feel healthy and, and great for the rest of the week. So... When I like what I'm saying is when I came to terms with how I actually view gym, I figured out how to motivate motivate myself to go in the sense of instead of trying to make myself love a thing that I was just never really going to feel passionate about, I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, I don't enjoy going that much, but I fucking love the benefits of it, which is I look better, I feel better, I eat more. It just makes my I feel more energetic. It just fixes my life. So instead of trying to motivate yourself to go to the gym, I think a lot of people, they see fucking fit uh, Instagram models who obviously gym and being fit is their passion. And they go, fuck, why can't I be that passionate? It's like, dude, if you tried to force yourself to be passionate about science, if you're not into science, you would run into the same problems. So I would, I would instead of, instead of looking at it as like, oh, how can I make myself love the gym and get motivated to go figure out the benefits of it and use that as a logical reason why you should go because it makes you feel better and, and use the reasons, <clears throat> use the benefits of gym to motivate yourself to go instead of trying to make going to gym the benefit because some people genuinely enjoy going there and doing it and the side of the positive side effects are like oh yeah that's pretty cool too but I really just like pushing myself myself in the gym but a lot of people are just like yeah I mean gym I could take it or leave it but it's the positive side effects that they really want and they really like so don't look at going to the gym as a thing that you have to force yourself to love love the benefits of gym and and look at gym as a as as a tool to get there. I don't love fucking walking, but I might love the destination. That's what I'm trying to say. So look at it like that. Um healthy diet due to my love for everything sweet. Uh I don't really have any advice for you there other than stop fucking eating that shit. It's evil. Sugar is uh is bad and the less you have of it, Gradually over time, the less you'll want it. I stopped having sugar like gradually. And then now when I have something like a chocolate bar or, or like lollies and stuff, I feel weird. Um, I just stopped having it because I knew it wasn't good for me. And I knew that sugar was hidden in everything anyway. So you're already having too much, even if you're not like eating Mars bars or chocolates or lollies or whatever the fuck. It's already in everything we eat. So I kind of realized, well, fuck, I'm already getting too much sugar anyway. Me eating like shit is just going to make that whole thing worse. So I just stopped having the sweet stuff. And when you stop having 
<clears throat> the stuff that is like overtly sweet, you'll have a less less of a craving for it. And soft drink and shit as well. I can't stand anymore. I just drink like water. I drink water and tea and 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 protein shakes sometimes. But um, even even the shakes now I'm finding are too sweet for me. So yeah, I think the 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 sugar thing. There's no real advice for it. You just need to cut it out and realize that you can get uh sweet stuff from like fruits. Like I have blueberries or or fucking strawberries and shit like that. That's enough for sweet stuff for me. So I don't know. Maybe try that. Maybe try and every time you feel like eating like a piece of shit, have a piece of fruit. I know that sounds fucking lame, but if you do that and you redirect your craving from shit food to uh, fruit, it will change. Like sometimes I'm just like, ah, oh, I really want a fucking apple. I never used to feel like that because it wasn't sweet enough for me. But now I have an apple and it tastes fucking awesome uh, because I haven't ruined my appetite with all this shithouse food. Um, Secondly, do you have any tips on making friends? Uh, Not really. I'm not not the best at this. (laughs) Uh, I struggle because I'm tall and I have resting bitch face. So I've been told that I come off as intimidating when I'm actually just really shy and I'm too scared to start up a conversation. But I love chatting to people and I just get super anxious trying to start the conversation. It's a long shot, but thanks if you can answer. Have a shit one. Um, Look, my memory card is actually going to run out, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to answer that second half of the question with Jazz because she's a really tall girl. She's six foot one. And I think that'd be a lot more beneficial than listening to to me uh, because I'm not a girl. I mean, I am incredibly tall, but... uh, People, for some reason, don't look at me as intimidating. Or they do now because of the internet shit, but they don't. They didn't when I was younger. Um, so, yeah, I'll get Jazz on to answer that second half of the question. Until then, I hope that helps you become less of a fat cunt or whatever your goals are, all right? So, that's the end of the podcast, guys. Sorry it's a short one. Uh, sorry it's a bit late. Oh, I just had no voice yesterday, and I don't want to lose it today. Um, next week should be a much longer one. Until then... Um, I've got a video coming out for you. I've been weekly. Uh, I hope you guys liked the new Lou review. I was really happy with it. Next video will be a Lou review as well. And on Tuesday, I am filming uh, two more Cooking Without Instructions videos. So that should come out maybe next week, the first one, and then the second one two weeks after that. I don't know. I need to work it out. I'm trying to juggle bi-monthly bull Lou review and, and the new series as well. So you will see. Either way, weekly videos, and I will see you very soon. Have an incredibly shit one. You cunts.